living God with you that the testimony the Almighty God will give you tonight will outlive you. Because you will increase by the day and His grace and His mercy will be upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Yesterday, we started looking from the book of Exodus chapter 23 from verse number 25. Exodus 23 verse number 25 said, And ye shall serve the Lord your God and ye shall bless thy bread and thy waters and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall not cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of their day I will fulfill. Let me just stop there tonight. We look at that passage of the scripture and we saw different promise of God, different covenant of God from prosperity to healing to long life to victory that God has promised to pour into the life of his people based on one thing that he said they will do. You will serve the Lord. And so we started by looking at this covenant of circumcision yesterday, uh, which is upon which every blessing of God is resting. That until the life of a man has been circumcised, until God has taken the heart of a man, a, the blessing of God will be far from such a life. It take a heart that has been given unto God to be lost in the service of God. Now when a man gives himself to the service of God, it show, it is an indication that God has touched the heart of that individual. And so, we concluded by saying, when God touches your heart and take care of the and take control of the place, then it flow into your heart, into your life with every other every good thing that He wants to manifest in your life that He wants into your life. We we'll move forward this evening in this day two. So when He say you will serve the Lord your God. And he will bless thy bread and your water. And that, we said that refers to the covenant of prosperity. That one of the dividends of serving the Lord is to prosper. What you get when you serve the Lord, what you get as a mark and as a result of serving the Lord is prosperity. And the matter of fact, God want to make everything in your hand to prosper. Now, when we talk about prosperity, it's not just talking about a certain amount of money, but it talks about having, you know, whatever things you lay your hands to do, you know, flourish in your hand, prosper in your hand, yield in your hand, do well in your hand, and give positive results in your hand. And God will want to prosper each one of us for a purpose. And why will God want to prosper, prosper us? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 gives us an answer to this question. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 he said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which is swear unto thy father as it is this day. Why will God want to give you power to get wealth? It is to establish his covenant which covenant? The covenant he has with the fathers. And when we're talking about father now, it is not your biological father. We talk about the father of faith. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You know, 
with whom God introduces himself at all times. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, I need to say one or two things very quickly before I go very deep. God give wealth. God is the giver or God is the provider of wealth. And I tell you, the word translated to wealth from Hebrew word means abundance. It makes things, is the one who gives abundance. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 says, Paul may plant, Apollo water, but God is the one that gives the increase. So God is the one who makes everything to abound. The number two thing you need to understand is that God is not against wealth or God is really, really interested in your wealth. As it is in some quarters, they believe that, uh, you know, wealthy people cannot make heaven or, you know, God doesn't want people to be, to be wealthy. But you need to get it right that wealth is of God. Wealth is from God. God is the giver of wealth. Third John in verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospered. So when he say, as your soul prospered, is to say something to you. The value of your soul. Now what is the value of the soul? It, it, it is a wordless. There is no way you can quantify what a soul worth. A worth so much. It worth much more than all the treasures that is in this world. That's why Jesus could say, there is nothing a man will give in exchange of his own soul. Amen? Money is good because it comes from the one who is the giver of good things. Money is good because it comes from the one who is the giver of good things. James 1, 17, make it clear that every good and perfect gift is from above, from the father of life. With him, there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. Amen? And then the reason why God wants to give you wealth is to establish a covenant. Is to prove his covenant that he is not a liar. That when he says something, he will always stand by his word. When he promises, he will always make good his word. And so what he has said unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, each time he gives us this power, this strength, it is to say to them, even though they are no more, but is he keeping the truth unto the generations that will accept and walk in their way. So when you read, look at that Deuteronomy chapter 8, 18, that God is the one who gives power to get well that he may establish. Now that word establish has to do with perform, confirm, fulfill, and make good his promise. The covenant he has made. He wants to perform, he wants to confirm, he wants to fulfill, and he wants to make good. And so I am believing God with somebody here this evening. Every blessing of God that you have ever read about in, from the word of God. In your life it shall be performed. In your life it shall be confirmed. In your life it shall be fulfilled. In your life it shall be made good. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it let your amen be better. Why will God want to prosper you? It is because of the covenant. There is a standing covenant between the, you, you know, God 
and your father, Father Abraham, Father Isaac, and Father Jacob. That covenant was primarily made with Abraham. It was transferred to Isaac, transferred to Jacob, and, and thereon, and in the New Testament, transferred to everyone who will accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. Now, to understand this concept of the covenant of God, we may need to reverse a little bit to Genesis chapter 12 and read from verse number 1 to get the thing right. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Everything that God wanted to do for Abraham was based on the fact that he says, get thee out of your country your country, from your father's house, and from among your kindred, to a place that I will show you. God called the man and he said, there is a journey of faith. I want to take you from the known to the unknown. From the familiar to the unfamiliar terrain. From something you are used to, to something you have never known. And the man decided to leave the known for the unknown, for the familiar to the unfamiliar, from the one that he was conversant with to the one he was yet to know. And so the journey went on and on and on. But by the time you get to chapter 15 of the book of Genesis, it has taken some time and Abraham now begins to ask God question. God, it's like uh, there was a deal between us. You asked me to leave my, my country, leave my father's house, leave my kindred. I have left all of them behind. I am yet to get what you promise. And so he was asking God in verse 2. What exactly do you want to give me? Because what I thought you are actually going to be giving me, I have not seen. And God said to him, took him out, walked him around, and asked him to begin to look up. And, you know, count stars. That, I'm go that is what I'm going to be doing for you. And he believed God. And the Bible says God counted it for him for righteousness. Amen? In verse 8, he asked God, and he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an if Epha of three years old, and a she-goat and and of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all days, and divided them in the midst, and lay each piece one against another, but the bird divided it not. And when the fowl came down upon the carcass, Abraham drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and lo, an horror of great darkness upon him. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed, thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Let me just wait and make one or two explanations. When Abraham asked God question, God decided to do something for him that will give him the guarantee that what he has promised 
what he said he will do will surely be done. Now in the days of Abraham, each time two people want to get into a strong agreement and want to prove their loyalty, their truth to one another, they always swan an oath. And they will put something in between, you know, a blood in between to show, to be a witness. And so God said, let me take you back to something that you know and you are familiar with. Go and get me an ifa, get me a she-goat, get me a turtle dove, bring all of them together and uh, put them before me. Now, and when Abraham put everything together, God decided to walk in between it. Now, normally, it is kings who will ask their general to come and swear hold of allegiance to them, to come and show that they will not betray them. But at this time, Abraham began to feel, it's like, a, I'm going to be betrayed. And God decided to say, don't worry, I will come, I will make myself low to give you the guarantee that I will not fail. And so those blood were spilled and God decided to walk in between and then he said to him of a surety because you have decided to make me go this way. The aftermath will be that your children will go, will be, will sojourn in a, in a strange land. But more than that, he said, they are going to serve. But all after that, they are coming out. And God, as you read further, make a promise that the land is going to be his and for all his children. And if you read as far from that moment, each time God talked to Abraham, he began to use the word covenant. All after that one, he began to say, my covenant with you. Even when Abraham has decided to deviate a little bit into the, into the laps of uh, Agai and gave back to Ishmael, God came in Genesis 17 and said, as for me, my covenant still stands. So from Genesis chapter 15, where God decided to swear an oath unto, unto Abraham, he made a covenant with him. Since you have decided to do my bidding and you are ready to do what I say, definitely there, there will be nothing that will be too big, you know, that I will not be able to give unto you. Amen? So promise change to covenant based on certain things that God decided to do in the life of Abraham. But they said to, to him, your children will serve but I will bring them out. And I want you to understand one thing. There is a time to serve and there is a time even to enter into great possession. I am saying to somebody here this evening, your season to begin to enter into great possession is now. Because by the hand and the power of the law, every act of service rendered unto the law will remind the Lord the covenant he has made with Abraham. And what will come in return into your life with the abundance of God's blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. God looked at Abraham and said, I have given the land to your children, not I will give. I have given. It is already theirs. Nothing will take it away from them. It is an everlasting possession. That is the reason why the nation of Israel may be very small. They may be smaller than all the hostile nations around them. They were surrounded by hostile neighbors. But they cannot, they cannot hold them. They remain an untouchable to the people, even though there are so many that surrounded them. That is the reason why they will always wait for anybody to come and look for their trouble. One of their prime ministers once said, 
that in the international treaty, if you go and fight to the territory of somebody to go and fight, and you win over that person and you take their land, after the war, you must release the land because you have encroached the land. But if a man come and make trouble with you and you beat him and you take the land, it is yours. So they always look for who will come and make trouble so that they will push you inside into your territory and claim that to be part of their own. So when the troubleshooter also discovered that, uh, wait a minute, these people are little by little expanding themselves. Let's leave them. We won't, go, we won't go and be looking for their trouble. We'll be doing it in another style. Beginning from this moment, every enemy that has been coming to trouble your life, you will win them and you will take over their territory. Every instrument of wickedness that the enemy might have been fashioned together against your life, they will be rendered impotent over your life. Beginning from this moment, may the Lord give you upper hand over all your adversities in the mighty name of Jesus. You will beat them down and you will take over their possession. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. So all those power who are ganging up that they want to come and overtake you, let them gang up. They will be beaten black and blue. And they will be destroyed. Amen. So that you can have everything they have. adjunct to your own. Amen. So it shall be. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now because God entered covenant with Abraham. When Isaac came. He was just riding on that covenant. When Abraham was to be described. He was described. To be great. His son became very great. By the time Jacob arrived, he became exceedingly great. Exceedingly great. There was a progression of increase. Why? Because there is a flow from the top that makes the thing increase and take everything along as increases. When I visited Israel, we were taken to the source of River Jordan. Now, at the source of River Jordan, the water is less than one inch from where the tin originated from. It's less than one inch. Very small amount of water. Now, but as the tin moves on, it was expanding and increasing. Expanding and increasing. It increases itself that at a certain time in the year, you dare not cross, over, cross it. And because, uh, you know, there are several many people who go to Jerusalem and want to be baptized in River Jordan. Now they have to do modern technology to do a carve out for where people can reach or else water will carry many people away. But the thing is, from the source, it looks very small. But as it's moving, it's increasing. Now what am I saying? From our father Abraham, it was small. But what God is looking for is something that will be winding and greater and bigger and be expanded. It will be deeper, higher and wider. In your turn, may the Lord make it greater, wider, deeper in the name of Jesus. Everything that will manifest God's glory, may your life connect with them. In the mighty name of Jesus. The basis of God's blessing is a covenant. And once you are linked with that covenant, you are entitled to the flow. Now one thing that I have discovered is that there are things that Abraham never lived to enjoy. That are part of the blessing. When you read in Hebrew, and they were giving us the chronology of all the men of faith, 
They got to a point and said, all of them at a point, you know, died without getting, without getting it. So which means, there are pending blessings. There are pending performance. There are pending manifestation. Waiting for who will come and lay claim. And as the Lord live and as the Spirit live, tonight, into that storehouse where unclaimed dividends of the fathers of old have been packed, May the Lord open for you in the name of Jesus. May you carry all that God has allowed for your generation. May you carry and manifest God's glory in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. A covenant is a deal enacted by God based on well-defined term. A deal enacted by God that is based on a well-defined term which was sealed with an oath. Sealed with an oath. And because it was sealed with an oath, nothing can change it. The writer of Hebrew, when you read it from in, uh, 6, from verse 13 to 18, make it clear to us, the lesser we swear to an, an oath to the, to, the, to the greater. But in this wise, God decided to do it. And it is for a purpose. So that uh, there can be a seal over, over that which he has done. So it is important to note that the covenant is the antidote or cure to any kinds of economic trouble. The covenant is the cure or the antidote to any form of economic trouble. That was the reason why in the days of Isaac in Genesis 26, in the midst of famine, in the midst of recession, the Bible says the man went forward. He grew until he became very great. As the Lord lives and as his spirit lives. In the time when even governments are saying they don't know what next to do. May the Lord connect you with greatness. May you contact divine greatness. May the abundance that comes from the hands of the Lord be released upon your life and manifest over you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. By the reason of the covenant, all the descendants of Abraham are connected to uncommon and unlimited blessing. So by so doing, you must be ready to look at yourself beyond your environment. You must be ready to look at yourself beyond what is available. Because one thing I, I know I have discovered about God is that he has their creative ability. He is the creator. He creates everything and anything. In the midst of nothing, in the midst of not enough, God can give you much more than enough. In Luke chapter 5, as you read from verse 1 to 7, on that day when Peter toiled all night and caught nothing, his conclusion, his experience was that there were no fish in that water that day because he was a professional. You know, they know when you see fishermen, 
they know when there are fish in the water and they know how to get, how to get them. So he said to Jesus, we have toiled all night and we have caught nothing, but nevertheless at your word, so that uh, just to prove a point to you that this water is empty. But that day when Jesus asked the man to let down his net, because that man has served the interests of Jesus by allowing Jesus to preach from his boat, and so he has to be compensated for it. He has connected himself with the plan and the program of God. As soon as Jesus said it, all the fish gathered. All those that were not available, by that word, they were created. Different species of fishes were created into that place. And so, when the man let down his net, they began to fight. Rumble, I am going with this net. I am saying to somebody this night, that by the power of the Almighty... And because you will walk according to the instruction of the Almighty God, blessing will, will, will locate you. Blessing will come into your life. In every aspect of your life, everything that has been hindering blessing around your life, today they are removed in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> All the spiritual embargo that may have been placed over your life. Today, by the authority of heaven, I have come to announce that they have overstayed their bound. Yeah. Ah, enough of limitation. What God has said must surely come to pass. Yeah. In your life, there shall be a manifestation. There shall be a performance in the mighty name of Jesus. A good number of times, what keep people down in poverty is a cause. An opposing force that want to say, we will see how this will ever happen. But where the covenant of God is operating, every effect of cause are reversed. Whatever it is that anyone may have said, whatever it is that anyone might have done against your progress, against your prosperity, must give way at this particular time. I stand in the authority of the word of God, covered with the blood of Jesus, using the name of Jesus to say every pronouncement that says you will remain small. Today I remove them. Today I remove them. Today I banish them. Today I banish them. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak a new word into your life. I speak a new word into your situation. And I say. Where they have said you will not prosper. By the power of the blood. Begin to prosper in the name of Jesus. Begin to break through in the name of Jesus. Begin to excel in the name of Jesus. God's mighty power. That lifts a man above all limitations. Come upon your life today and carry you up in the mighty name of Jesus. All those who are chanted incantation to take anything or to take any advantage that you are supposed to have taken. Today, every effect of incantation, every effect of astrological power that has put anyone at advantage over you. Today it is destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. By the reason of the sure covenant with the God of heaven, those who said they will always be ahead of you and you will always be behind them. Today I declare them held back and pushed backward. 
May the hand of God's power carry you and throw you above and be ahead. All your competitors, may the Lord carry you above them in the name of Jesus. The one who specializes in teaching the hands to war and the finger to battle, today anoint your hand for uncommon success. For a great release. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, let your amen be better. In achieving and getting to the place of abundance. Few things are in your path that you know you just have to get right. The battle line is already drawn. People you never know could be on the opposing side. They are coming to bow before you and confess all the atrocity before you in the name of Jesus. What then do you do to activate or to keep enjoying this covenant. Number one, you must remain in love with the word of God. The word of God is the thing that keeps us prospering. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 to 8. He said, only be thou strong and very courageous. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever, wherever you go. The word of God is saying, if only you will allow the word of God to be your guide. East, west, north, or south. He said you will prosper. By the authority of the word of God, I say to you this evening, every direction you turn, every legitimate thing you place your hands upon, will produce in abundance for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I say it will produce in abundance for you in the name of Jesus. David was charging his son Solomon. He said in 1 Kings 2 3, he said, And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his status and his commandment, and his judgment, and his testimony, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper. In all that thou doest, the key to prospering is to connect with the word of God. Read it, accept it, and uh, leave it out. Live according to the word of God and the blessings will flow. Number two, you must do everything to attract God's presence into your life. Attracts, you must do everything that will attract God's presence into your life. It is the presence of God that gives every good things of life that you desire. Exodus 33, 14 says, it gives peace. Everything that will bring peace of mind, everything that will bring satisfaction, the presence of God usher them in. Psalm 16, 11 says, it gives the fullness of joy. Everything that guarantees the fullness of God's joy, it brings them into your life. And not only that he gives, there are other things that also resist. He resists opposition out of your way. He removes the thing that want to stand as obstacle on your way. Psalm 97 verse 5. Psalm 97 verse 5. He said, the ill melt like was at the presence of the Lord. And at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. He will met so that God's glory can manifest. Number three, 
Learn to seek God with all of your heart. Because the more you seek God, the more he will make you to prosper. Job 36 verse 11 says if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. King Uzziah was just 16. Inexperienced. He became king at the time of recession when all the treasury had been looted and the, everything was empty. But the Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 5, 2 Chronicles 26, verse 5, he saw the Lord in the day of Zechariah, who had the understanding of the vision of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God make him to prosper. The more you seek the Lord, prosperity will flow in. The more the prosperity of God flow into your life. Number four, you must disconnect, disassociate, and discontinue with sinners and every sinful company. Disconnect yourself. Disassociate yourself. Discontinue with them if you want the blessings of God to flow. Psalm 1 from verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standed in the ways of sinner, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in a season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Never take an ungodly counsel. Never come with sinners. Never join or approve this corner. Disassociate where it is necessary. Disconnect, discontinue with them, and then you will begin to see the result. He says, Once you delight yourself in the Lord and meditate in His word, He said, You will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that produces its seed in its season. Number five, you must do away with laziness and idleness. It is one thing for God to promise you blessing. It is another thing for you to be willing to walk into it. If God make all the provision and the provision is waiting and you don't do what you're supposed to do, you may not get what God wants to give you. But my prayer for you tonight is that every step you must take Everything you must do in order to get there, the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Proverbs 22, 29 says, Say thou a man that is diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me men. Laziness and idleness is a license to poverty. It's a license to relegation. Proverbs 13, verse 4 says, the soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 say, He become a poor that deal with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make rich. You don't fold your hand and sit inside the room and be praying in tongue and say prosperity is coming. It doesn't come by mere speaking in tongue. There must be something you do that God will work with. Amen? Amen? Number six. You must create a platform through which God will bless you. Create a platform for God to bless you. If you see money drop in front of you when you are walking on the street... I can guarantee you it doesn't come from heaven. It must be somebody else's money. Somebody throw it there. God doesn't throw money at people. 
It makes you work to get some to get result. So don't fold your hand. Create a platform. That which you will do that God will bless. Start from something small. A number of times people will say they want to begin business from selling a car. If you can't sell a car, you can sell a tire. Set some small, small thing. And from that minimum, God will take you to the maximum. And I say this one, you want to get into abundance as you work for people. Think of what other things that will be yours that also want to do. Now don't go and begin to sell your things where you have been asked to sell. Put something inside of your room, inside of your home. You know, put something that will push to others and it will bring all the blessings that you desire into your life. Or else, every blessing you're supposed to be enjoying, somebody else will be taking it. Joseph carried the bless, co covenant blessing. But Potiphar was the one enjoying the blessing. Jacob carried the blessing, but Laban was the one carrying it because that was the field. You know, it was, his, his testimony was that God was blessing me because of you. Now you create a platform for yourself through which God will bless you. And then number seven is that you must believe and practicalize sowing and reaping. There is no shortcut if you want to get to abundance. As a matter of fact, the place of God's blessing, the, one of the covenant, covenant paths to, to prosperity is in sowing and reaping. Genesis chapter 8, as you read from verse 20, the Bible says, And Noah built an ark unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offer burnt offering on the altar. And the Lord smelled sweet sever. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth. Is the earth still remain? Is the earth still remain? Is there seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. If you are willing to do everything that is in your part, God will do everything in his part. Financial abundance answer to certain spiritual transactions. And when we say you must do, you know, believe and practicalize sowing and reaping. There are two categories of seed you must sow. The intangible and the tangible. The, tang the intangible is your life. The greatest seed you give to God that attracts God is your life. And the fact you need to understand is an accepted life come before an accepted offering. Until your life is acceptable unto God, your offering cannot be acceptable unto him. Your life, your time, and your talent must be given unto God. He gave them to you in the first place. You must give it back to him. Then the tangible seed you must give unto God. Your treasure you know, your talent, you know, your gold, your silver must be given unto God. In practical time, your tithes, your first fruit, your offering must be one of the things that regularly you must give unto the Lord. Each time you give God a tithe, you are saying, God, you are my God. I'm sure you know that the first person we hear about Israel of tithe from was Abraham. And that was a covenant. When Jacob was going, he connected with that covenant by making pledge to God. I also, like my father, we tithe. And God prosper his way. 
the reason why many people have not gone beyond where they are is because what God has given them, they never return to God what belongs to him. And so God is holding his part. But there is a grace this evening that God will give over your life. And that grace is to identify the seed from the bread. So that everything you must sow, you will sow them. And you will only eat the things that are meant for as a bread. In the mighty name of Jesus. So that the abundance of God's blessing that God has ordained for your life will begin to come over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you keep your side with the Lord, God will prove himself over your life and turn things around to your favor. Tonight, God wants to prove himself over your life because you as a person must show yourself as unto God. Nothing is too big for me to release unto you. And he will also say in return, nothing is too big in my hand. To be given unto you. Stand with me to your feet. It is time for us to pray.